Who? Who? Oh. Hello everyone and welcome to part 3.75 of my Pokemon DS hacking tutorials. Where I have returned from a long hiatus to bring you news of a new Pokemon hacking tool that I think is very exciting. This is a tool that's supposed to replace PokePick DS, where PokeDS Pick is a very functional tool, and I do not want to downplay how useful it is, but it can be a little hard to read, especially when you're new to all this. However, I feel this new tool is much easier to follow, and more importantly, can try to index your sprites for you, so I want to show it off here. All right, and like many times before, we're gonna start by opening up Tink, and then opening up the Pokemon Platinum ROM, and we want the Pokemon Sprite Narc, which is in Poke Tool, Poke Graphic, and it's the Platinum Poke Graphic Narc there. Okay. So we're going to extract that and then save it to the desktop for ease of access. Bang and boom. Nice. All right. So put that away. Okay. Up to this point, I've been asking you to open up Poke DS Pick for this. And then. You would go file, open NARC, and then come down to your NARC there. And already it's like nothing has changed with this tool. You have to know to come down here and scroll past the six null files until you get the Bulbasaur and there you are. And then you would have to know that this is the female back sprite. And then seven, which I've scrolled down now, is now the male back sprite. And then you have eight, which is the female front sprite. Nine is the male front sprite. And we come down again, still nothing has changed up here, but now we have 10, which is the non-shiny palette, which has the colors that are being applied to all the sprites you've seen so far. And then we go down one more and that's the shiny palette. But I mean, the first question you'd have is how do you see the shiny version of the back sprite? You'd have to come up uh, well, not you can scroll up to one of the back sprites and then you can come down and you have to jump back to the shiny palette to see it that way. And again, you have to know how to do this. So it's just it's a little hard to follow. So now we come to our new tool after all that build up. And that is the Gen 4 Sprite Editor by Squeeble, where here I can also Go file, open NARC, open the exact same NARC, and immediately, already, it has jumped past all of the fluff files and taken me right to Bulbasaur. So step one, already great. And as you can see, you can see every potential sprite you will see of Bulbasaur in the game in one location. However, I do feel I should still explain a little bit of what's being displayed here, that uh, might be a little confusing, is that, uh, so you see eight individual images, right around here, but the ROM doesn't actually store eight files. It's just the four that I showed you that ended with 1930, which is six, seven, eight, and nine for Bulbasaur. So really what this tool is doing is at the top half here are those four sprites with the non-shiny palette, and then the bottom half here are the four same sprites just shown with the shiny palette as a preview, which should make more sense as we actually start editing a sprite here. And to do that, I brought some old friends along from previous episodes to use as examples. The uh, first old friend is going to be Hatshu. Which are the exact same sprites I made back in episode 8. These ended with GG because this is the second half of that video where I worked with graphic scale. And just to show you, I'm going to go ahead and open up a sprite. Boom. And you can see that they properly have 16 colors and that when you check their color mode, they are indexed, which are the two criteria you need to meet the formatting that Pokemon ROMs require to display that sprite. If at any point you are unfamiliar with how indexing works and you want to see exactly how I made this sprite here, check out episode eight for this one and it'll step you through. I actually think I make it from scratch. So it's pretty good. But OK, let's insert it using this tool. So I'm going to click on the female back sprite and you are in at you index. Perfect. Then do the back sprite here. 
Okay, and the first thing I'm asked at this point is that the image's palette does not match the current palette. Use palette match. And what that's referring to is that when I insert this sprite, it's asking me if I want to replace not only the back sprite, but also item 10, which is just the palette. So basically it's saying that if I say yes and I use palette match, it's going to keep the colors of Bulbasaur and apply them to Pikachu. If I say no, then it's going to replace the colors uh, in this palette with the ones up here for Pikachu. And that's what I want here. I want Pikachu to be yellow. So I'll click no. Okay. And so therefore this Pikachu looks fine, but then the Pikachu colors are being applied to Bulbasaur, <laughs> which is kind of terrifying. But we can fix that by just clicking this one. I only have one back spread, so this is easy. So that one goes in there. And then I can put in the front sprite and the other front sprite. And it didn't ask me about the palette for the front sprites here because when I checked the indexing, these colors are already in the same order. So that's a-okay. Now, like I said later on, I'm actually gonna show you how to work with sprites that aren't even indexed at all, but we'll get to that a little bit later because it's a little more tricky to work with. But okay, you can see now that I have a nice green Pikachu there already, but those are the Bulbasaur shiny colors. I don't want those. So the next part is to insert the shiny palette. Now, what you want to be careful with here is to insert your example shiny that you drew over one of the sprites that look like it. So I could, since I'm using the same front sprite for our, both of these, I could insert over any either of the two, so I'll click U, and then click my shiny sprite, and bam, they work out okay. If you don't do that, and you try to insert over the back one, they don't insert correctly because they're, they're trying to apply the wrong shape with the right colors and it just gets confused. So for consistency, just pick a sprite that looks like the one you drew for the right colors. And that should keep things consistent from there. And okay, we're already done. We can see that uh, the Pikachus are in there and that in the game, both the Shinies and the not Shinies look exactly how I want, which is great. So just like in PokePick DS, you go File, right to Narc. And I can scroll down, come up, and they're still good. But okay, so this is the easy way. I'm using the same uh, back sprites and front sprites, so let's try the my other old friend that I brought along for something a bit more complicated. Okay, so close, 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 down, and I will bring up you. There you are. And these are the exact magic carp sprites that I made in episode 3.5 when I was trying to show you guys how to have like a different colored regions for your male and female back sprites and front sprites. So just for consistency, I'm gonna put that here and show you that these are all still with the same colors and correctly indexed. Which again, refer back to uh, 3.5 with how I did that, especially for the shiny palette because that one was an extra step. <laughs> on how to do that, so that's all right. But okay, even with these, it should be as easy as bringing back up the tools. So we've got that, we'll go to Ivysaur. And this I'm gonna use an advanced insertion tool that this new tool has called Load Sprite Set. And then it'll ask me to load. Let's see here. Nope, it's on Pikachu, we need to go. Magikarp, there we go. So we'll do female back sprite. And then male back sprite. And then female front sprite. Male front sprite. And then also the shiny palette. However, with this one, so again, you do still want to care to tell the tool what sprite is your shiny example based off of. So this is the male shiny front sprite. So I want to be sure with these radio buttons to pick male front. Everything else should be okay. Click done. And they all just went in okay. That done. Okay. Bada bing, bada right to narc. <laughs> and that's it. That's that's it. You can just see right here that these all worked great. And that is exactly why I think this tool is so exciting. It makes things so much easier to read and do. And I hope it helps you guys out too. I also mentioned I was going to try to do this with non-index sprites. So things that were made directly in paint, like the most basic of drawing tools. 
and to show you that this tool can still do that. It will try to index things for you. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that it is rather important that you guys understand what indexing is, how it works, because you'll still need to know it for things like trainer, battle sprites, or versus faces, or stuff like that. But anyway, let's give this a shot. So, if I close these ones down, I'll minimize this for a sec. I'm going to take these, put them over here, and now I have the exact same sprites, but saved with paint. I can show you. See here, I'll start with the hat chew from paint. Bam. Okay. So you can see that there's an alpha color. If I go into color mode, it's uh, RGB color instead of indexed. And this is basically how most images saved in paint will look. So there's no fancy indexing or anything needed for these. So I can just get a sprite out of the way and bring back up the tool. And let's go down to Venusaur. And just like before, I'm gonna click on the female back sprite, then go back up. This time I'm gonna find Hatchu Paint. That way I'm working with the non-index sprites. And then I click on that one. Okay, and again, I'm asked about the palette. So again, here I want to say no so that my colors are put in there. And that works out great. I'll do the same thing. Now it doesn't ask me again for that one because these are the same image. So those, that, the, the new palette now fits. And Venusaur looks kind of cool. Anyway. <laughs> but now when I click on the female front sprite and load that one, it asks me for it again. And that's because unlike my other sprites, these don't have the same colors in the same order. They don't actually match. So if I was to hit no, like usual, they actually get messed up. The colors are there, but they're in the wrong order. So to prevent this, let me roll up, roll back down. That refreshes Venusaur. I can come in here, do Pikachu. So the first one I want to say no, so then I get Pikachu colors. Doesn't care about this one. And then I come to that one. And then when it says, do I want to match the palette? I agree, yes. So it will apply the, the back sprite colors to the front sprite. Like so. Okay, and then we come over here, we do it again. And then this one again, I want to match the colors, yes. However, this is where things get a little tricky. I don't know why the first one has the gray hat like that or like that. But through trial and error, I also know that if I click it again and do it again, and uh, say yes again, it's fine. Why? <laughs> I'm not sure. But what I can also show you then, so I haven't saved any of this, I'm gonna scroll up, scroll back down, back to Venusaur. What I found instead is that if I go into the front sprite, and I said no, and then brought this one in, won't ask me anything because those match, and then do the reverse, where here I say yes, and then here I say yes, then they work out fine. It's got to be the way that the tool finds the colors as it scans them. I think it scans them from like left to right and sees what colors they find first. So you're going to have to play around with it a bit, but I still didn't have to index these in any way. So I could just draw a sprite and paint and in they came. So at the same point, I just come to one of the front sprites and I click on that one and it's already fine. Nothing fancy needed there. So again, file, right to narc, down, up, and they're done. And then as one last example, we'll also get rid of Charmander. So much like the other one, I also have versions of my Magikarp saved in paint. Where I'll just one more time, close this down. Bada bing, bada bam. Where these also all have that transparent color on the front. And none of them are in index mode or RGB color. So these are basic PNGs. Okay, so I can even use the load sprite set. We locate Magikarp paint. I'll do the female back, male back, female front, male front, and the shiny palette, which is based off of the male front like before, hit done. 
and it, it just went in. It went in fine. Even though none of them were indexed beforehand. Like if I look at them in a sprite, their colors are all over the place. So actually that load sprite set works out better if your sprites aren't already indexed. So that's great. All right, so then we will go ahead, right to NARC, and then just to purely test it, we're gonna close it, reopen the tool, uh, file, open NARC, put that same one going there, bing, 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 and they all look good. So okay, the last part would be to minimize and get that out of the way, and you can go back to Tink, and then and click it, change file, put in the edited NARC, bang. Okay, and save a ROM, test it, and sure it out great. And from there again, I hope you're as excited as I am about this tool. That really, really helps my main headache with Pokey DS Pick. So as always, I've added this tool to my DS video tools folder and uh, you can find it uh, now inside of uh, Gen 4 Sprite Editor which has the executable at the version I tested it with there may be more recent versions later and then also the readme that uh, Squeeble wrote right here or if you want I have a link to their Poke Community forum post where they've released the tool where you can get in also while you're there if you do love this tool please let them know They'll put it in a YouTube comment down below. They did all the work. I'm just trying to help spread this really good tool. And all right. I hope from here the Pokemon hacking is uh, easier for you. If any questions, let me know down below. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Good night, everybody.